Hi, I'm Jane Lynch, and this is How It Got Better. Um, I grew up in a south suburb of Chicago called Dalton, and it was mostly prairie around us. I have a, an older sister. She's two years older and a younger brother, two years younger. My mother's a perfect example of the rhythm method. There were, you know, certain ways you behaved. Girls did certain things, boys did certain things, and I did not fit in that. I identified more with boy things. I enjoyed dressing like a boy. I spent the summers without a shirt on until I was about 10, and my mother, like, was chasing after me going, put on a shirt. And I remember my, this, my dad said, her nipples are sprouting. <laughs> The boys stopped wanting to play with me when I got to be about 10, and I had to fight to play baseball. Every day, I didn't know how I was going to be received, because I would just hang out until I got to play. You know, deep down inside, I knew that there was something else going on. I finally had a word for it when I was about 14. I had these friends, and they said, you know, on the beach, Sometimes you'll see guys walking together, holding hands, and they're gay for each other. And I went, gay. I am the girl version of that. I went like, oh. and that's not a good thing, is it? Oh, God. And I think I have that. It was almost like I had a disease. I felt like I had been diagnosed. I remember I had a journal, and after I wrote this in the journal, I threw it out. I remember I wrote, I am gay. No one can ever know this. And I went four blocks away and threw it out in somebody else's garbage. For me, to be ostracized would have been the worst thing. To be thought of as different and not accepted was a uh, fate worse than death. So I had to make some really big decisions about how I was going to go forth in life and um, who I was going to tell something to. And it also led to a kind of a life of secrecy that I had to unravel. The 70s was a freewheeling time, and there was a lot of raising of the consciousness. But um, the knowledge of my being gay and when I was in high school was pushed down pretty far. But my best friend, Christopher, who was a lot more unafraid of what people thought of him, um, although he wasn't running around going, I'm gay, but he was very effeminate and very out there and dyed his hair like clown red. People loved him and hated him. He was fine with that. Kind of, I mean, I don't think anybody's fine with it, but he was kind of like, <laughs> about it. Whereas I was just like, oh, don't, don't make them dislike you, you know? But he, we also never, never said, you know, I'm gay, are you gay? You know, we never, never talked about it. But just the fact that it was unspoken, we took great refuge in each other, great comfort in each other, even though it wasn't something we talked about. After graduate school, I went to New York, and I started hanging out in piano bars, which are just riddled with gays. So I started to become part of a gay community, and I started to be more open about it. Uh, you know, I started to date people and um, started to have flings with people. Because I went to New York, you know, I, I went to a place where there are, are a lot of gay people and, who are self-empowered and don't think there's anything wrong with being gay. And then you kind of, like, catch that. Like, a, it's like a good virus. I found my people. I believe that people come into our life. We draw the, our people to us. And, you know, just always keep your eye open, your heart open for those like-minded, like-hearted others. It doesn't even have to be somebody else who's gay going through this, but just somebody who you know is sympathetic and they will come your way. You're gonna find your people. And now I live in a world where I don't give a shit <laughs> if you have a problem with who I am. I'm 54 years old. I live in Los Angeles. I am on television. Every day I do something creative. I'm, I'm asked to do things now. I'm invited places. And, you know, I had that deep, dark secret that there was something wrong with me and that if people found out that I would be shunned and, and kept from doing what I really wanted to do. And that just hasn't been the case. And it doesn't have to be the case for anybody. Julie, not a good time. This is a very important event. Got a little bit more time? That's good. Okay. You know that persistence that kept me on the baseball field even when the boys weren't letting me play? That served me. That served me in my career. My desire to play is much stronger than my fear of rejection. 
And I think dealing with my sexuality as a young person started that ball rolling. You, you're gonna find something in you, you're gonna pull something out of your feet that is gonna help you move on. It's gonna be something really strong and true and it's going to make you a more extraordinary person. You know, you're gonna find something in you that's gonna give you the get up and go and you're gonna use that all through your life. It does get better and it got better for me. Um, I'm voicing an animated film that was originally recorded, I think, in Chinese. And I'm playing the president's wife, and it is my son who goes off on this adventure. He's cool! <laughs> Just run. Just run. You're amazing. <laughs> and they have to keep telling me how amazing I am just to keep me going or I leave. My job. That's her job. And I will kill you.